life expectancy, life expectancy for humans has hovered around 20 to 30 for the vast majority of our existence. We experienced a quantum leap in life expectancy beginning about 1850 and to about 80 where we are today. Old age as we know it now is a new phenomenon, rarely experienced in human history and being able to see your grandchildren and great-grandchildren was a rare uh, occurrence throughout most of our existence. Why did it occur? We basically redistributed death su quite successfully from the young to the old. We uh, successfully removed most infectious diseases early in life, and now we have heart disease, cancer, stroke, and Alzheimer's disease. What the hell were we thinking? Look at what's going on here. I mean, we responded very quickly and appropriately developing uh, new technologies designed to treat a wide variety of diseases uh, and disorders, and we are achieving some level of success. Part of the problem, though, is that we've chosen an old method of approaching chronic diseases, the old infectious disease model, which is to hit each, inf each chronic disease as it arises. I refer to it as the, the hurdle approach to, to modern medicine. We're now at a state in most developed countries where we're only gaining small, incremental increases in life expectancy. And the higher life expectancy goes, the more difficult it becomes to raise it further. We're sort of at near the top of the glass now. The approach that we've taken, which I would suggest is quite problematic, is to treat each disease, major fatal disease, as if it's independent of all of the others. Heart disease, cancer, and stroke, we treat them as silos. In fact, the NIH is built on silos. What we're suggesting is this particular approach, this silo approach to disease, we argue, is going to lead to an increase in the prevalence of all of the things that we don't like about growing old, all of the diseases. The economic implications of what we're talking about are profound. When Social Security was invented in 1935, they anticipated that no more than 20 million people would ever draw from Social Security. They were wrong, fundamentally wrong. We now have uh, well over 70 million people drawing from Social Security, and that number is going to rise dramatically. And the impact on Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security in terms of the economics are dramatic, and we see it in uh, the debates that are taking place now. My colleagues and I published a piece in uh, The Scientist a few years ago where we recommended a solution. It wasn't a particularly new one, but the solution was to decelerate the biological process of aging. We referred to it as the longevity dividend. And the argu argument is fairly straightforward. By slowing the biological process of aging, you attack all of the diseases simultaneously and reduce them all simultaneously. It's a fundamentally different horizontal approach to what goes wrong with us by comparison to what we're doing today. We're suggesting a Manhattan-style project, a massive investment designed to slow the biological process of aging in people. It was actually recommended a couple of decades ago. It's now been accomplished at one level uh, already. Uh, it's important to realize that we're, how did we get here today? Well, the vast majority of the uh, gain in life expectancy occurred because of uh, science that was invented uh, by individuals. We are now at a point where the gains that we're going to achieve in public health and longevity are going to be because of investments in health and longevity, not necessarily just from the scientists themselves. And these are some examples of individuals who've already uh, uh, done so. We're, we're, we're going to go after, I'll, I'll be frank, we're going to go after the Billionaires Club. We're, we don't believe the NIH is capable of funding a project uh, of this magnitude. Uh, so we're going to be going after fundamentally different sources. And in very much the same way as uh, Kennedy suggested that we uh, land a man on the moon and, and bring him back safely, we're actually looking for something quite similar, a fundamentally different way of thinking about aging and disease and uh, public health. We're asking for uh, $3 billion per year for five years. We think we can achieve this. We think it is an achievable goal, and we believe that if we get this level of funding, we are going to succeed in, uh, in slowing the biological process of aging. These are a couple of the uh, pathways that researchers are pursuing, just a handful. Uh, the genetics of uh, long-lived people is extraordinarily interesting, but a variety of other pathways are already being pursued and, uh, and are very interesting. And I'll end by saying that, that a large number of uh, organizations 
uh, universities uh, have already begun to invest in this and stories have already begun in uh, Science, Wired, the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal on this issue of the longevity dividend. Thank you.